Welcome to Juniper's Contrail product demo series. This demo showcases Contrail's network virtualization, dynamic service automation, and powerful analytics capabilities to help build elastic, open, and secure multi-tenant clouds. Businesses are embracing dynamic applications such as web services, mobile cloud, and big data to drive more revenue. The new generation of applications need to run in a distributed fashion to serve users across a wide geographic region, process asynchronous tasks and requests in parallel, and always be available. Developing, testing, and releasing these applications must also be streamlined, and the different resource combinations for the different DevOps stages need to be provisioned dynamically based on IT and security policies. In order to meet these and many other demands, the infrastructure must evolve to be very agile, elastic, programmable, and reliable, and it needs to support self-service, multi-tenancy, workflow automation, and workload mobility across physical and virtual environments. The infrastructure comprises of compute, storage, and network resources. With server virtualization and orchestration technologies, the operation system is separated from the compute hardware to allow multiple virtual machines to statistically multiplex over the physical compute resource and virtual machines to be instantiated and moved from one server to another based on their current resource needs. A similar revolution is happening in networking, where multiple virtual networks implemented in pure software can statistically multiplex over the physical network resource pool. Through network orchestration and automation by a logically centralized SDN controller, these virtual networks and the associated services can be dynamically spun up and connected based on more granular policies, eliminating the need to manually configure and troubleshoot each physical network element. Juniper Contrail has embraced a proactive overlay approach to achieve network virtualization and orchestration on top of any IP fabric. It has the following characteristics. One, with its scale-out software architecture, dynamic intercloud federation, and on-demand service scaling capabilities, Contrail is built to support an elastic and highly available infrastructure. Two, Contrail exposes northbound RESTful APIs to enable system-level orchestration. It hides the complexities of sophisticated network control mechanisms and allows applications to program the network with high-level commands. Three, Contrail dynamically orchestrates any Juniper and third-party networking services, handling service instance management, scaling, load balancing, and monitoring. Four, Contrail is designed with an open architecture and proven standards that enable seamless interoperability with physical or virtual gateways and across multiple clouds. Five, Contrail offers powerful analytics to monitor and troubleshoot the physical and virtual networks and assist in capacity planning and better application provisioning. In this demo, we will show you a fictitious enterprise called Mock Financial, who leverages Contrail technology integrated with OpenStack to build their own enterprise private cloud. This integration enables their employees to deploy multi-tier applications, connect a dynamically instantiated VM to the internet, and troubleshoot with granular network analytics. Mock Financial wants to launch a big data application, which has the front-end web tier and back-end database tier. We will show you how this can be done in a matter of minutes. First, we will create a couple of virtual networks called Big Data-FE and Big Data-BE. Here I'm going to use both the OpenStack Horizon UI and the Contrail UI, which are powered by the same backend but the Contrail UI provides an enhanced view into the network configuration, control, and analytics. I click on Create in the Contrail UI and give the network name as Big Data-FE and address block of 192.168.99.0/24. Then I use OpenStack Horizon UI to create Big Data-BE 
with an address block of 192.168.199.0 slash 24. My two virtual networks are now up and running. From connectivity details, we can get a clear visual representation of the network topology. Now the two networks are up, but they are not connected to each other. Next, I'm going to launch two virtual machines running the web tier and database tier of my multi-tier application in the front end and back end networks respectively. The web tier needs to be accessible from the public internet, so I will assign a public floating IP to that instance. In the Horizon UI, I go to Instances tab and click on Create. I pick the appropriate software images for the web tier and give it a name, Big Data-FE-01, and associate it with the network Big Data-FE. In addition, I create another instance called Big Data-BE-01 to be associated with the network Big Data-BE. Now, if I go to the console of the Big Data-FE-01 instance, I can issue if config to verify that it was allocated an IP address 192.168.99.253. I can ping my own IP address, but not the address of the database tier instance, nor any public IP address. To make the web tier accessible from the public internet, I go ahead and assign a floating IP address of 10.84.53.252 to the big data-fe-01 instance. I can verify by pinging 10.84.53.252 from any external host. The web tier and database tiers are still in two disparate networks. In the next step, I will set up a policy to connect these two networks. Let's first double check that from the big data-be-01 instance, I can't ping the big data-fe-01 instance. I then create a policy called big data-fe-2-be that is to be associated with both the front end and back end networks. It allows packets of any protocols from source network big data-fe to be sent to destination network big data-be. Once the policy is successfully saved, the pings from back-end network to front-end network have responded, and the two application tiers are now connected. From the connectivity details, we can verify that visually. Here I'm actually going to modify the application configuration file to direct the web tier to send queries to the proper database tier. We can then launch a browser to connect the web tier through the public floating IP address allocated to it and see statistics retrieved from the backend database and displayed in the browser window. After witnessing the agility that the application team achieved through private cloud powered by Juniper Contrail, other mock financial teams also start to follow suit. Mock financial business development teams need to spin up a virtual machine with internet access to conduct a sentiment analysis of the new outreach program they launched. They can easily do that by chaining a NAT service offered by Juniper Firefly Perimeter between their VM and the public network. Let me quickly create a BizDev virtual network. To create a NAT service instance, I first create a NAT gateway service template with a specific combination of service mode, service type, service image, and interface types. I then create a NAT service instance for the business development team based on the NAT gateway template with BizDev as the left network and public as the right network to specify how the service instant needs to be chained. Finally, I configure a policy to be associated with BizDev and public networks 
with a rule that dictates all traffic from source network BizDev to destination network public needs to flow through the newly created NAT gateway service instance. Let me show you in connectivity detail the visual representation of my network. As you can see, now the BizDev network is connected to the public network through the NAT gateway service instance. Now if I spin up a virtual machine inside the BizDev network running Ubuntu Linux, I can verify my internet access from inside that instance. After I get onto the console, I can ping any public IP addresses. And I can launch a Firefox browser inside my BizDev instance and browse CNN.com. Contrail offers a lot of cool operational features to facilitate monitoring, diagnostics, and troubleshooting. At the dashboard screen, you can see the different types of Contrail components and virtual instances. If I click on one of the V routers, I can see a detailed summary including CPU and memory utilization, the routes of the V router carriers, the different flows going through the vRouter, the policies currently applied, the networks this vRouter belongs to, the interfaces, and the console logs. At the connectivity details screen, you can click on one of the links and see the traffic statistics and also zoom in to see the traffic details in a certain time range. At the network screen, you can see the summary of all the networks configured, and when I click on one specific network, you can get network topology and traffic statistics information, a port map showing what port traffic has been sent, port distribution, and the traffic flowing through certain ports. At the Instances screen, you can see all the virtual instances and the servers they run on. When I click on a certain instance, I get the traffic flowing through it. In addition, I can monitor the Contrail control nodes. It shows me control node specific information, such as its BGP peers, including physical Juniper MX gateway routers, and peer control nodes, and the vRouters it communicates with through XMPP. I can also get the routes within a certain routing table that the control node maintains. That concludes the Contrail for Elastic Cloud demonstration. For more information on Contrail, please visit www.juniper.net. Thank you.